Sometimes, even the simplest things can become incredibly complex, and sometimes even the most complex things can be explained simply. There is no way for us to approach the complexities and nuances of this particular case that would do justice to either side, because the webs woven by both good and bad actors on either side of the scale have removed the ability to objectively come to a conclusion, one way or another, that is beyond a reasonable doubt. For that reason, we leave you to take the information both presented and made available and come to your own conclusions. Our story takes place in 2014 and starts on June 18th in the capital of Oklahoma State, Oklahoma City. It's around 2 a.m. and the Oklahoma City Police Force is finishing their shift change at the Spring Lake Station. For some officers, the workday is just beginning and for others, just ending. One officer in particular that's starting his journey home is Daniel Holtzclaw. All is seemingly normal, with Officer Holtzclaw taking his regular route home, driving north on North Prospect Avenue in his assigned take-home patrol vehicle. Something strange happens just minutes after leaving the station, though. Before crossing Northeast 50th Street, his vehicle's GPS system loses connection, seemingly having lost all power. In short order, it would be discovered that the disconnection was intentional and caused by the only person in the vehicle at the time, Officer Daniel Holtzclaw. This was a major breach of policy, not only because this removes the ability to locate the department's property and employee, but also for officer safety. Holtzclaw's intentional powering off of the GPS was such an egregious violation that this one action alone raised exponentially more suspicion towards him. Suspicion that, at its roots, was fueled by what would happen just moments later. Even with a disabled locator, there was no question of where Holtzclaw and his now off-the-radar patrol vehicle would end up. On the corner of North Lincoln Boulevard and Northeast 50th Street, only a few blocks from where he had powered off his GPS, Holtzclaw would perform a traffic stop on a red Pontiac Grand Am. The driver was Jenny Liggins, a 57-year-old black woman. Both Liggins and Holtzclaw's statements matched on some basic facts, but they would each recall vastly different experiences and details. Holtzclaw would state that he suspected an intoxicated driver after allegedly witnessing the vehicle swerve as it was approaching the traffic lights at the intersection. The traffic stop lasted roughly 15 minutes, with Holtzclaw stating that he performed standard checks and searches for drugs, weapons, and open alcoholic containers. After confirming that Liggins was not impaired, he releases her without any citation or warning issued, telling her that he will escort her back to her destination. Holtzclaw would continue on Interstate 44 North as Liggins merged onto Interstate 44 West, choosing to abandon the plan of escorting her and opting to go home instead. Upon further questioning about the details of this traffic stop, it was revealed that Holtzclaw did not report the encounter to police dispatch, did not run a records check on Liggins, and even had completely logged off of his computer. All of this was in addition to having disabled the locator in his vehicle. These admitted truths are critically important, especially when comparing the details of Holtzclaw's recollection with Liggins. Excluding departmental policy violations, the interaction between Holtzclaw and Liggins based on Holtzclaw's words seemed to be fairly standard procedure. What did Liggins' timeline include that Holtzclaw's didn't? What happened during that traffic stop that would escalate into having not only the event in question come under scrutiny, but Daniel Holtzclaw as a whole? This is the interrogation of Daniel Holtzclaw. Welcome to our domain. Now, what's your first name? Daniel. Daniel. Okay. Daniel, just have a sit in here. Okay. And you, see, you, like you got a piss or anything? You can have a sit there. That's probably one. I, I could hold it. I'm not. A, <laughs> I'm just. All right. I'm gonna run right on out. Uh, whatever's more comfortable, man. Look up. That'll work. Say there's a chair no right that i had a uh, back surgery okay. a year ago rocky's coming the okay. and i had a back fusion oh 
This is about the only chair I can sit in. I don't it's know. Out what, of your back support. It does. Well, no, it gives. It's um, it's very giving. I'm turning this off because I don't want this back in this. And not to be yucky, but it's low back where my back fusion is, and I can put my butt right there, mm -hmm. so my tailbone's not getting extra pressure on it. I don't know. It it I can't sit in one of those. It'll kill me. Okay. Rocky's coming, mm -hmm. but I'm going to do this while, and he may walk in here in a minute and okay. get this done. Um, now, I know you're an officer, and I know you've seen these a thousand times right. and you've read them yourself. Right. You still ask me any questions if you have one. Right. Okay. Don't be embarrassed of that. Right. Okay. I'm thinking about you. There is. Why are you embarrassed? <laughs> <laughs> why? Tell me why you're embarrassed. The station deal, so. Nobody. Well, I mean, there's I mean, rumors everyone, flying. Everyone. I know. <laughs> and we tried to do that as kind of quietly as we could, and that's why we took you out the front and stuff. But this is gonna make the rumors go away. Okay. Okay. For you. Right. The rumor tomorrow is gonna be on somebody else. Right. Does that make sense? Okay. So let's get them off of you, mm -hmm. and get them on to somebody else, and get this over with. Okay. Okay. All right. You have the right to remain silent. While Holtzclaw has his Miranda rights read to him, two noteworthy things stand out. The first is the jovial attitude of the investigators. Some believe that this is because of Holtzclaw and Detective Kim Davis sharing some common ground, that is, being a part of the Oklahoma City Police Department. However, it is more likely that Detective Davis is keeping the mood casual for the sake of the interrogation, which will be made more apparent by her later use of childish language. By removing the appearance of severity, acting as if this is just something that they need to get through quickly, Detective Davis is hoping to get Daniel to speak with less reservation. Secondly, some proponents of Holtzclaw's case believe that his willingness to speak even after being read his rights is evidence supporting his innocence. Innocent and guilty people speak to police regularly. Daniel's willingness to speak to detectives is nothing more than that, a willingness to speak to detectives. As far as his motive behind speaking to detectives, we'll allow you to decide as the interrogation progresses. Having these rights in mind, do you wish to talk to me and us at this time without an attorney? Yes. Present? Okay, right. right, yes, right there. Read this out loud. I have read the statement of my rights and understand what my rights are. I'm willing to make a statement and answer questions at this time. I do not want an attorney present at this time. I understand and know that what I'm doing, no promises or threats may have been made to me, and no pressure or force of any kind has been used against me. Agree? Agree. Sign, print. That's too funny. I haven't met anybody else that writes left-handed. <laughs> It kind of creates a problem when you're on a traffic stop, doesn't it? Because you're writing and holding book. your ticket book in this hand and your and gun hand doesn't me. bother you. Well, that's because you're me. huge. <laughs> <laughs> What's your commission number? 1782. I masturbate right and left. Oh, okay. <laughs> Does that work? Um, I think I do that left hand. Very good. Well, I'm dominant. You are? Yes. <laughs> The odd interaction you just heard was real. Once again, there are two factors that are likely in motion. Firstly, Detective Davis and Detective Gregory, who is off screen and sitting in front of Holtzclaw, are sex crimes detectives. It is likely that they have been desensitized towards topics that people would normally only have in private, and as such, seem unintentionally crude with their conversations. However, it is also just as likely that this is a planned behavior. By introducing the discussion of highly personal matters into the conversation early, they can attempt to break down the barriers or discomfort surrounding it, making it seem like no big deal and that they're just having a casual, although crude, conversation between cohorts, as opposed to it being the very serious interrogation that it really is. Okay, just like I, we talked in the car. Mm -hmm. uh, you haven't heard any rumors? Yeah, rumors. So, you so were, when I walked in the station, I see Captain lean over, not unusual, got Captain Clifton, hey, but then I, I've seen you in the cabin, I've never seen you, and so... I'm a nobody. But mm -hmm. I haven't heard anything, okay. so I'm just like anything. You, you had said, and we told you that there was a traffic stop, right. that somebody made some allegations against an officer. 
Right. They don't know the officer's name, none of that. But, and you said that you made a traffic stop after work, yeah. but you didn't call it in. I didn't call it in. Where was that? It was about northeast 50th and Lincoln just to the west. Okay. Tell me about that stop. I was going westbound on northeast 50th, probably a block just east of uh, Lincoln. I see a red Grand Prix, our Grand Dam, in my right lane, in the outside lane, I'm in the inside lane. The car swerves, and so at the time I'm thinking, okay, it's a, probably a drunk person, or maybe a guy excited because they saw a cop. So I kind of fall behind it, kind of drifting just a little bit, not crossing lane lines, nothing crazy. So I light it up because it, at first the traffic violation I saw at first when it swerved. Um, that was just west of uh, Northeast 50th and Lincoln. And then made contact, it was a black female, um, asked for license insurance, um, stated that she didn't have insurance, gave me an ID. At the time I'm like, do you have a valid insurance or a valid license? She said no, I told her, I just got off work, I mean, <laughs> What's the deal? You know, why why are you swerving? And she says, um, I'm just trying to go home to Ann Arborish on the northwest side to see your daughter or something like that. Um, so I asked, is there anything on board as far as the vehicle? Is it okay if I search your vehicle and whatnot? She said, the only thing that's inside there is a Kool-Aid cup. I'm like, is there anything inside of that Kool-Aid? Is there liquor or anything inside that Kool-Aid? She's no. I'm like, okay, is there anything else inside there? She says, there's pills. I'm like, is that the only thing? And then, so I said, can you have permission to search your car? She says, yes, I go inside the car, I see a lot of pills, but- um, What kind of pills? I didn't really- Like scattered pills or in a bottle She said pill? it was hydrocoding pills, but I just quickly glanced, looked at it, and I think I saw her name on the prescription bottle, so I didn't, Oh, so it was a bottle? Right, uh, okay. there were several bottles in her purse. And then, so at that time, I just returned back to her. It's like, um, Okay, I saw your pills. I didn't see any alcohol. I sniffed the drink, didn't smell any alcohol on the Kool Aid. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm just off work. I'm tired. Um, get your license taken care of. Just mine. So she didn't have a driver's license? She didn't have a driver's license. And I was just like, go to DPS, uh, Department of Public Safety on King, get that taken care of. I was cut her loose after that. Okay. Then where'd you go? I went straight home. Okay. Um. Do you remember her name? It was on the I don't, description. I don't. Okay. okay. Um, do you make traffic stops normally after work? I don't, but in that case, I saw her swerve and whatnot, so I. I mean, me, yeah, I don't. Felt. After I, get off work, <laughs> I know. I mean, people I know, cop, cops say that is have a you know whatnot <laughs> right. to have the vision, whatever. But I felt like I needed to make that traffic stop. Okay. How was she? Was she respectful? Was she? She no, felt like she, she was nervous and whatnot, and I'm like, why are you nervous? And she was even crying. I'm like, why are you crying? Why are you nervous? What not? And she's just like, I, I don't know. I'm just nervous because you're a cop and I got pulled over. I'm like nothing you had to be nervous about. And I told her, I'm like, I don't really want to take you to jail for no SDL or anything. I just got off work. I'm tired. Mm -hmm. So with my officer, um, courtesy or whatnot, and so I go get that taken care of tomorrow. Let her on her way. And you don't have to. Ex I'm not going to sit here and go. Why didn't you right. take her to die? Well, you're that's, less. That's the no, I don't care. Um, was she wrong? Did you think she was drunk? I think she was. I think she was. She drank, but I don't think she. With my experience, I don't think she was past the legal limit. Right. Right. So. So I mean. And that's what I asked her too. Is like with your pain medicines of hydrocoding every know everyone knows that you drink with that it maximizes the effect. So I asked her that she said no. But I when she was in the back of my car and when I was in the front car and the driver said I could smell it off of her, but I don't think she was still past the legal limit. Okay. Okay. So you got her out of the car? Yes. Okay. Um and put her in the back of your car? Yes. Okay. Um any problems there? No, she was cooperative. They give me any problems or whatnot. Okay. And then you searched, did you run her through Unit 800? I didn't. You didn't? Mm -hmm. So, did you run her on your MDT? No, I didn't. All my all my stuff as far as that, because I didn't even call it in and say it was a traffic stop, my computer was off and everything as well. 
Did you shut it off? I just shut it off. Work? Yeah, on the way on 50th, I turned it off right before the traffic stop, basically. Okay. And where did you pick her up? 50th and what about? 50th and Lincoln, just to the west. But now, where'd you see her swerve, kind of? I said block just to the east of uh, Lincoln and 50th. Okay. Did she pull over right away? She was in the right lane and the outside lane when I saw her swerve. And so she saw a police car right there. And so she kind of did what everyone does, slow down, kind of, okay, is he going to pull me over or not? And then I lit her up about 50th and Lincoln past the intersection to the west. Okay. When you um, when you put her in your car, did you pat search her? Uh, when I came around, I was like, lift up your shirt. Is there anything on you? Anything as far as your waistband or anything like that? She said no. And then I put her in the vehicle and went from there. Did, her did your hands go on her at all? I backhanded, I backhanded her on as far as the side. Where on her body? Tell me. You uh, backhanded her waist, her waist, and the back portion. I didn't touch her butt or anything, but the back portion of the waist. And then she lifted it up like right here. And there's nothing. Did she on lift it up like this? No. Okay. So she never. Like, went, whoo, nothing no. exposed her breasts no. or anything like that. She asked me if I was like, no, it's okay. She asked you? If it, you want to search me, I'm like, no, it's okay. Uh, so she never, like, put her hands on the car and you... No, no. Okay. Okay. Um, when you, where was she positioned or standing when you back, when you did your, the it back of your about hands on her? probably the right, front right fender of the, my patrol vehicle. But did you, was she facing you or was she... Turned. No, she was facing away from me. And you just kind of did it like yeah, this? Yeah, back there, yes. Okay. Did your hand go on her butt or anything? No, that's not what I'm saying. It was, it was the hip, the side, not the butt section. What about right here? No. You didn't? No, I didn't. Like a tuck a gun and That's right here. why I asked to lift it up. Oh, so she just kind of showed yeah, you her belly? Right. Okay. Then you talked to her for a little bit. Right. In the, well, you, after you searched her, you right. put her in the back of the car. Right. Then we used to always kind of keep the door open and talk when they're not like combative or anything. Did right. you talk to her and get information then while she was in the back of your car? Right. I talked to her for a little bit just as far as what's inside the vehicle. Can I consent to search your vehicle? Um, is there anything in that Kool-Aid? She said no. Um, just talking to her. What's the deal? Why are you driving late at 2 o'clock at night? You know, Why did you swerve? Um, so she's going to Ann Arbor over on the northwest side to visit her daughter, I believe. So. Then you went up and searched her car? After she gave me consent to search her car. How long, you think? I did a quick search, to be honest with you. I didn't. I looked under the seat, boom, sniffed the, sniffed the juice, whatever she's had, and I didn't smell alcohol on it. Went through her purse, like she said, there's there were pills in it, looked at it real quick to see if their name was there, and that was basically it. Okay, then when you went back to her, mm -hmm. what happened? When I went back to her, I was like, okay, I didn't smell any alcohol on your your car and your juice thing and I'm like what's the deal are you really drunk or not and she's like no I'm just trying to go back home and at that time I was like okay but I'll go ahead and follow you and I said I'm not going to take you to jail I'm tired I'm not going to take you to jail I'll go and follow you and let's go back to 44 and you head westbound on 44 so that's what we did did you follow her I actually she when I went behind her and we got in the car she took forever, and I started getting annoyed, so I just do you turned it, and I went ahead, and I saw her in the back view of my rearview mirror, and she was following a 44, but then I took off going northbound on Broadway Extension while she took 44 to go west. So you were able to see her do that? Yes. And go, and then when you, did you lose her when you got on Broadway? When I went to northbound on Broadway, and she went 44 west. Okay, okay. Old Claw has recalled the events of that traffic stop, just as we covered in the beginning of this video. The question we poised at the end was, what could Jenny Liggins, the woman that Holtz Claw pulled over, had said that was so drastically different to warrant an investigation? Now, we will start to uncover some of those differences. All right. Well, she's, it, it sounds like this is the lady, I mean, this is the deal where she's the complaining party. Okay. Okay. And she's making some sexual allegations, obviously, because sex crimes is working it. Right. What did she say? Well, was there anything, an accidental touch at anything? If she thought it, I, when I passed her, Jerry, but I, there was nothing as far as, I felt like I would do anything as far as sexual or anything like that. For my safety, I just checked to see the weapons or anything. And, make and I, it, to make clear, I didn't, didn't touch her butt, but the waist side, and whatnot. 
if you would like me to do it in front of you to show you. But <laughs> no, and I'm, fi I'm fine with it, and you have every right to do that. Right. She's saying that you made her lift up her shirt, and sh and when she lifted up her shirt, she exposed her breasts. No, no. Did you ever see I her asked her, is there, I asked her, is there anything inside your bra? And she said, no. So I was like, okay. And she said, you want me to show you? And that's all the time I said, no. No, you don't need to do that. She said that, she said, do you want, she said she was doing this. When you said, is there anything inside your bra? And she was, well, no, I don't have anything like that. Did she do that? Yeah, she did, but I didn't look or anything like, like that. Right. And then she was like, do you want me to show you? I was like, no. She said when she said, do you want me to show you? You said, yeah, and she went, No, I didn't. But could she have been, woo -hoo, flashing you? And right. now you don't want to tell me because you're afraid you're no, going to get in trouble? No, no. When I told her no, I said no. Then she didn't go, yeah, no. you know, because sometimes drunk girls are... Having a good time. Yeah, right. and, and no, partying down. And let's face and it. I've already heard stories about officers people, and whatnot. They and so want officers want, for hubbies so or whatever. I said no. Or, I said no. But you could have said no. But I'm asking you if she flashed you anyways. I didn't see her. I didn't, didn't see, see her no breasts. Boobies? I didn't see her breasts. Uh, what about pants? Nothing in her pants as far as that concerned. She was wearing tight jeans. So she said she pulled them down. I didn't see it. You didn't see her pulling down? I didn't see her pulling down pants. Could she have done it when you were up searching the car? She could have. I didn't Did have she her, have them on? I didn't have her handcuffed or anything. When you came back to the car and got her out were her pants fastened were they yeah everything they were still, up and everything was still intact so you never saw her pull her pants down no i didn't why do you think she's making this up i don't know did you write her a ticket i didn't i let her go and actually i said i want to arrest you for your no sdl trying to figure out why she'd say that i mean i could see her saying it if you wrote her a ticket because she's pissed off right Detective Davis brings up one of the most pressing circumstances surrounding the case. What possible reason could there have been for Liggins to lie? She wasn't taken to jail or even arrested. She did not receive a ticket or summons. She was let go with a warning that was solely verbal and unentered into police databases. At the time, Liggins stood to gain nothing. If her story was fabricated, why would she do that? Now, make it quite clear, if you saw her boobs, I don't care if she's flashing you. I did not see you her You did not breasts. see her boobies? No, I did not see her breasts. Is she saying you shined your light on her? I did not see her Where breasts. do you keep your flashlight? The left side right here, right down my radio. Did you have your flashlight out on the traffic stop? I did. When she was going like this, did you have your I flashlight on her? like that. But I, as I'm out of the radio, like this, I have it right or position over us, but I didn't. Right, but did you have it on her when you're talking to her so you can see her? It's I mean, was it her. on her when she goes like this? Maybe she could have right. construed to see, it. To see her inside the vehicle. Was the dome light on? The dome light was not on. It didn't come on? I don't know how. Does that come on when you open your back door? Mm. It's been too long since I've been in a scout car. I can't recall, to be honest with you. <laughs> I don't, th I don't think the on? back, I don't think it does. This was the dome okay. light. I'm just trying to figure out. How long do you think you were on that traffic stop? I don't think it was an it's excess of over a, just a regular speed. 15 minutes at most, just like a regular traffic stop. Nothing as far as more. About 15 minutes. How long were you with her? How long of that 15 minutes do you think was searching her car? Where she's, maybe she's sitting in the back seat. Like I said, I had a quick search, probably at max, maybe a little bit over five minutes, maybe like five minutes if. So you're with her for 10 minutes? Talking to her, yes. Did it take a while to get her to consent to search or what? 10 minutes a long time. She was nervous and she was crying and stuff and I told her not to Did be she nervous. say why she was crying? She says, police officer and whatnot and I'm just nervous because I got stopped by a police officer so I'm like calm down everything's fine and then so I think maybe with the fact that she had no SDL maybe she was nervous as well too and then so I went to the search and it wasn't that it was a quick search like I said before it wasn't in detail pulling up carpet it was a quick search because you were just ready to go home I was ready to go home. did you go home go straight to bed I went home straight to bed okay 
think of anything yet. Mm. Oh, I think that was pretty good. Wasn't that pretty easy? Hey, we got to do this. Okay. Okay, if you don't mind. It's, I got to take your, your buckles. Okay. We're doing that in the... This one? All right. Did we, did we buckle swap anybody in the academy? I don't... As a demonstration? Yeah. I'll let your name there, because I don't even know how to spell it. I can how do you say your name? Daniel Holtzclaw. Holtzclaw. What is that? It's uh, German. Can you speak that. German? Uh, no, I can't. Oh. I read that out loud to me. It's, yeah. I didn't even hold school after having been advised of my right not to have a, a search made of my body. Here and after mentioned without a search warrant and my right to refuse to consent to search a search. To such a search, hereby authorized Rocky Gregory, a uh, detective of the Oklahoma City Police Department, to conduct a complete search of my body located at 71 Colcord, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Officers are authorized by me to, to take uh, from my body samples of swabs from my body, which they may desire. This written permission is being given by me to the above named police official voluntary uh, and without threats of promises of any kind. Basically, you're giving buckle swab, swabs on of your own free will. Okay. okay. We, we do this as part, part of. See, this ain't so bad, huh? Well, I never had this done, so. Right. They are. Uh, there we go. And you get a free teeth cleaning with your first time. Mm -hmm. You won't go none, though. All right, and then we're going to have one more round. We'll have a couple more questions. What time is it on your watch? I turned my phone off. So. I've got uh, 4.50, sorry, 4.47. But I've got so do you usually do traffic stops on what now or what, what was? I don't. Like I, I said before, I, I really, really don't. I usually try to get home because I'm tired of them. Well, and I, are you a big DUI worker? When I first started coming out, I did. But not really at the end now, to be honest with you. I usually, if I see somebody swarming, whoop, the other way. And that's <laughs> a lot of officers do too, so. Well, Daniel, this is this is kind of one of the things that uh, we kind of bring it in here to right. see how truthful you are. Right. Now, you need to kind of, kind of think of a few different things here. Okay. Okay, we pulled up a lot of video around that area okay. after these allegations. Okay. In what could be one of potentially many missteps for the investigators, Detective Rocky Gregory mentions that there's a surplus of video surveillance in the area in question. This isn't a lie, because there is some video surveillance, but it's important to remember that this is also the same area that Holtzclaw patrols. It would be logical to assume that officers are aware of where security cameras are located on a building, and even more so of one who's looking to commit a crime. True, there is footage of the traffic stop, but given the angle and quality, it does not bolster either side's argument. Okay, she also have a SANE exam, which you know what that consists of. Right. There's a reason why we wanted your buckles. Okay. Okay. Now, I mean, we can go through a couple different things mm -hmm. of why we've got you in here, but you sure there's nothing you want to... Nothing. So if we go off the video and watch that, right. you're still going to stick with your story. Yes, sir. If we go off DNA? DNA as well. Should we show you the video? If yes. You, you do want to see it? Do I, yes. Holtzclaw pushes back against the investigators, asking to see the video in question, which they know shows nothing. So there's nothing that... You Everything that I recall of that night is what I what was I asked and everything. That's what happened. If I, have I maybe not asked enough questions? I think everything covered as far as that. Detective Davis narrows in on Holdsclaw's answer. I've answered everything that was asked of me when he's asked if she needs to ask more questions. This answer that Holdsclaw gave gives the impression, intended or not, that there is more to the story, but the right questions need to be asked in order to uncover more information. Detective Davis responds with heavy pressure. Do you recall putting your penis in her mouth? I don't. 
would you recall that if you did it? If I did it, yeah. Okay. Well, I think you really, in all honesty, you need to really double think about this. I mean, I, I gotta be honest with you, it doesn't look really good. Okay. okay. I mean, in what you originally thought, detectives just don't roll up in there for no reason. Right. Okay. And we just didn't pick you out. out. Okay. Right. I mean, there's a whole lineup there. Mm -hmm. Okay. But there's definitely enough here to bring you in here to start questioning you. Right. Okay. We knew you were on that stop. Right. We knew you were there. Mm -hmm. And we can watch a whole lot of actions being performed while you were there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's why she was trying to give you every out on the whole booby thing. Right. Okay. Now, is there any reason, any reason at all, even from whatever angle, because, you know, it takes a little bit to clear up those videos. Right. But any reason why your people would be out? No. Nothing? Nothing. Okay. Now, in doing this, you know how saying exams work, and I ain't got to explain about DNA or anything like that. Right. Now, I didn't say you had sex with her. Right. Okay. But getting them. Okay. That is a different story. Right. Okay. You see my concern here. I'm just listening to you, sir. I know. That's I'm... But I'd rather listen to you and you start talking. That's all I have, sir. Okay. Are we, are we going to get something from the SANE exam? Go with the SANE exam. Do, and do you understand that you don't have to full-blown ejaculate to get something out of the SANE exam? Right. We can get skin cells. We can get pre-ejaculate. We can do all that and still get DNA. Right. And or did your go in her mouth? No, it did not. Okay. Because DNA will clear it up and here's the deal too. I it we can fall on the sword okay. and say I screwed up or something, but if we say we didn't do it, we didn't do it, we didn't do it, and then the DNA comes back and says he did it, then we have a huge problem. Right. We're here to give you the chance to fall on the sword so we don't we don't want a huge problem we don't want a huge problem for you right it's this is time it's time if you're if it touched her mouth if it touched the inside of her mouth for one second two seconds three seconds you gotta tell us now look there's there's a huge difference there's a huge difference in between a rape being forced mm -hmm. and some and, old girl who yeah. wants it right okay We've had plenty of that. We, we, we get that. We know that. Okay. But there is, there is, there is a big difference, okay? Right. But I'm just saying, you know, these videos ain't helping, and I mean, we're going to do the comparing and all that. Okay. Okay. But uh, it's not looking good so far. Okay. Okay. And I don't want to see anybody go down for something that right. there was no force. Right. Not, I'm not seeing any beating or anything like that. Right. Okay. I'm not seeing that big time, uh, big guy forcer type thing like what we do see. Right. But. But know. if it was a get out of jail free card, that happens. Right. And we know that happens. Right. What Detective Davis is referencing is that it's well known that sometimes law enforcement officers will use their authority to coerce citizens to perform sexual favors in return for being let go, or in her words, a get-out-of-jail-free card. Detective Davis is utilizing the read technique tactic of getting a suspect to confess to the action using more favorable circumstances. In this instance, she's framing it as, it wasn't an assault, it was just receiving a favor for giving a favor. And that we gotta know that. We got to know that versus, you know, he made me, I didn't want to, blah, blah, blah. If it's a get out of jail free card, then that's a different story. And we've worked enough of them, okay, cases that it didn't happen. The problem is, is where we're at right now, mm -hmm. okay? And that's why we wanted to hear your version of the story. Right. Whether we just go off of what we see and, and, I mean, whatever this tests out as, right. okay? 
but so I'm I'm sticking with my story. I, I'm okay. <laughs> okay. On the video, are we gonna see her boobies? Shouldn't see her boobs. I didn't see her boobs. Okay. Are we gonna see her pull her pants down? I didn't see her pull her pants down. Okay. Are we gonna see your p out? No. Nope. Are we gonna see your p go in her mouth? No. Are we gonna get any DNA to that? No. Let's switch up for a second. Get another girl. Okay. Mm -hmm. You probably don't not necessarily gonna remember the name, but her name is Terry Morris. Okay. Black female. Um supposedly you promised her a ride to the city rescue mission. This ring a bell? No. You did a, a traffic stop with her. Uh, she thought you ran for warrants. Was it clicking? You drove her around. Mm -hmm. No. Name doesn't, I don't recall a name like that. And she's claiming the same thing. The exact same thing. Detective Gregory reveals that there is now another accuser named Terry Morris. As the case continued to develop after this interrogation, a total of 21 accusers would come forward, stating that they too were a victim of Holt's Claw. And here again, for whatever reason, things are pointing at you again. Right. Now this was before even this incident this morning. Traffic stop, not logged in, all that stuff. This morning? No, no. This has been a little bit ago. Okay. This was here just a couple of weeks ago. Okay. Okay. Anything? I don't. I do you don't, remember? Do you remember stopping? I don't recall a name. Okay. Of Terry Moore. Well, I wouldn't remember a right. name. How about Black Female Downtown City Rescue Mission? That's what I was trying to jog your memory. I haven't been to a city rescue mission. I didn't say you made it there. <laughs> Have you I've promised been, anybody a ride to the city rescue I haven't mission? asked any, anyone asked me to see a rescue mission. No, a, she didn't have to ask you. Did you offer to take anybody to the city rescue mission? No, I don't offer anyone because I don't like going there. To be honest with you, I don't... Don't like going with what? I don't like going over to the city rescue mission or anything like that. Okay. How about any stops of a person just walking, even just downtown? Anywhere downtown? No. You, you I don't, I don't, in spring like I don't go downtown, besides if I go to class and, um, and not class in, but Western Maine, the Valeros, the or the jail, our jail, or headquarters, right. property, right. right? And you just, you just don't remember doing any of those type of stops? No. Not in the last month or so? No. Do you run everybody that you come in contact with? Majority of the time. But you didn't run, oh girl, this morning. The 50th. The 50th in Lincoln. No, I didn't. I didn't run her. We, the other girl that he's talking about is kind of making the same allegations, and that's that's weird. Yeah, that's it doesn't look good. I mean, I mean that, that's it doesn't weird. look yeah, it doesn't look good. So. No, I don't. No one with the city rescue mission. Never been asked. Never been offered anyone to go there. Um, do you give people rides sometimes? I do give people rides. Do you? I do. Because sometimes I'd be like, I am not a taxi cab. I'll go. But rides. have you always been in this your new car? I mean, you ever had it down? Uh, in the initial statements given by Janie Liggins, she stated that the officer she came in contact with had an all-black squad car. These were still fairly new at the time, with only a handful of officers being assigned the new all-black Ford Taurus police interceptor, while the standard in the department was still the black-and-white Ford Crown Victoria police interceptor. This is a detail that Detective Davis used to narrow down the list of officers that Liggins could have come in contact with that morning. Drive another? I've had a wreck on 27th um, and King where it was down for a little bit, um, starting out, was in the pool cars. But this is my take home car. But I'm saying in the last month, have you been driving any of the older cars? Mm, no. Black and white versus the solid yeah, I think black. this is the only car I've been in. Have you ever driven a black and white car? I have, yeah. When when was that? Right out of the academy. The regular Crown Vic. But when you when you wrecked your car and it was down, what did you drive? 
pound egg, black and white. A, a black and white one. Right. When was that? A year ago, maybe. Okay. So. How long have you had to take them for? Mm, probably a year and a half. And it's been this one? This one, yeah. So you wrecked it six months after having it? Uh, somewhere around there, that yeah. That sucks. Yeah. Was it your fault? No. Yeah. Well, that's good. <laughs> what do you think about all this? Um, heads out here. Um, I want you to take this exam and get get this over with. Um, I feel embarrassed because it's going to the station. Um, well, heard, that's why we try to handle yeah, it. Right, right, right. And I've heard of officers going through this and and whatnot, and that's something I don't want my rep to be, you know, about. You know, I'm, I'm a good officer. I, I don't, that's not me. It's not me. Are you circumcised? I am circumcised. So, just asking. Do you have pubic hair? Uh, yes. Well, I mean, some people manscape, as you call it. Right. You groom? I groom, okay. yes. So do I. For <laughs> 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 you got any identifying marks around your? I don't. Just the plain old, huh? Just plain old. <laughs> plain old fourteen incher. No, I don't know to say about <laughs> that, but. <laughs> See, you should have. You just had your opportunity. <laughs> I just don't know what to, what to think. Would you take a polygraph? Uh, yeah, if you want to take a polygraph. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think of a solution. Do you know how slow DNA is? I don't. I do not. Slow. Um, you'd be willing to take a polygraph on it? Yeah. Okay. Go on. Get that set up. You, uh, that's kind of delving off different, but you married? I'm not married. Girlfriends? Uh, here and there. Kids? No kids. You're big. You on roids? I'm not on steroids. A little bit? No, I've been always... Which I don't care. I've always been a big... I'm not the dope police. I've always been a big bone guy. Football athletic. You, you got more than big bones. You got big muscles, too. I work too. out all the time. Do you? I do. I Where go. do you work out? At uh, Four Star Gym. Off of May, about 63rd. Yeah. No roids at all? No roids. You do all the protein drinks I drink and all a that lot stuff. Of protein. That can damage yeah. your kidneys, just so you know. <laughs> so, if you did roids, would you tell us? I would. I'll tell you. I mean, because we don't care. I have nothing to hide about that. I've always been a big guy. I always work out all the time and whatnot. When was the last shower you had? Uh, took a shower before work. When you went home, was anybody home? Um, my girlfriend was home. Did you, did you get laid? Huh? No, she didn't. Huh? She just stayed. Did you get laid? Uh, messed around, yeah. What's messed around? Sex? Uh, I guess. They were all adults. She, we almost had sex, and she was tired. What'd you do? So, my went around her and then maybe went a little bit in and then she pushed me off and said, no, we don't want to, I'm tired. I was like, okay. That's kind of mean to let it get that far and then stop. <laughs> so, so that's when you got home? That's when I got home. How often do you have sex? Uh, about once a day, if that. You guys have sex once a day? Yeah. How old are you? 27. Oh, uh, well, yeah. How much off. Uh, maybe once a day. So you have sex once a day and once a day. If I yeah. What'd you do when you got shot down at home today? Uh, you usually got to relieve that. Right. That's, <laughs> I know that was that was before work. That happened before work. You before work? Yeah. Not. Did you just go roll over and go to sleep when she didn't give you yeah. any? You ever been accused of anything like this before? I haven't. Not in Michigan? No. I have not. 
You weren't one of those football players. No, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. No, I was not. Holtzclaw was an accomplished athlete nearly his entire life. He played football as a linebacker in high school, setting a school record for 25 tackles in one game. He also played linebacker at Eastern Michigan University, where he graduated with a degree in criminal justice in 2010. After graduating, Holtzclaw unsuccessfully attempted to get drafted into the NFL. Soon after this, he joined the Oklahoma City Police Force. Anything, anything you can think of that will help us help you. That's it. I want to step out. I want to go. Tess, I want to get clear on my name. I want to get clear on my Because we, you know what? If this is a bunch of false allegations, then I want it cleared up too. Right. And I'll help you clear it up. And, and, uh, it's this. We don't talk. It's not swarm. It's swarming it's, around Spring Lake. It's, it's, it's out it's there. It's in the department too. So and it's I mean. not swarming all over the department. We in sex crimes, we do not run around and go. Guess what? This won't work. I'm gonna work. We don't do that. It's right. not professional. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's around Spring Lake. Right. And everybody's gonna know that we pulled you down here. We right. tried to do it as discreetly as we could. Right. But. And like I said, there's officers that. I'm not saying being with the hookers is right. But it happens, right. and it's life. Right. And if if that's what this was, lay it out there for me now. Right. No, it wasn't. No. Wasn't she? Would did she offer anything? Don't take me to jail. She, don't. I'll do this. No, I'll do this. Did she, she offer you anything? I think she was nervous, like I said earlier, and maybe a little flirtatious, but nothing crazy. She never offered anything no. in exchange for you not taking her. No, she's really worried about going to jail, but and, she, and you sometimes know, she was, they'll say, "Hey, I'll give you a hunter if no. I don't go to jail." <laughs> no, no. She didn't offer that. Mm -hmm. She was nervous, like I said. She cried earlier. Did what she did cry you? as soon as you stopped her, or after she was in your car? When did she start crying? I think in the car. Yeah. What made you let her go? Number one. To be to be honest, yeah. I want to get home. Then why'd you pull her over? It, <laughs> like I said earlier, I just cop, swerve, DUI, and if Holy I had, crap, if I had, if I had, if I, had I know if I had to do it, I would have done it. But I didn't think that she was past the legal limit. That's just, I mean, I just would avoid that if I, did you at any time, you said you picked her up around 50th and Lincoln. I mean, when you just, saw her swerve, right. did you at any time, were you always behind her or did you pull up beside her to maybe see who was in the car and then no, pull back she, behind her? She was at 50th and Lincoln, swerved, and I was behind her, so I felt behind her. And then wait you, till Were you ever away. beside her? No. What, what lane was she in? The Niles Highway. Close to the curb? Yeah. Did you ever pull up beside her on this way and then fall behind her? No. I was, because sometimes, I was directly behind her about here and she swerved. And you stayed behind her? And because sometimes her. I would pull up beside to see, okay, how many people am I dealing with? No. Nah, in the car. I didn't do that time. I've done that before. But right. You didn't do that. I didn't do it this time. No. Could you tell if she was the only passenger? I or? couldn't. It was dark tinted windows. I couldn't tell. So you didn't know how many people you were walking up on? No, I didn't. Did she roll down her window as soon as you? She had the back left window rolled down and then uh, the uh, she didn't never rolled it up and the, I think she opened the door if I recall. Okay. And was it pretty quick that you took her to the back to your car? After a couple questions, license, you know, insurance, typical thing. She just gave me her little uh, Oklahoma identification card. And that's why I go, okay, investigate attention, come back to the car with me. Okay. Yeah, because that gives you a reason to search if you need it. I mean, what would you have done if you had found some dope or a gun or something? Like, there's, I mean, as officers, if you find a little dime bag, it's, you know, you can squash it out, you know, rub it out. With gun, obviously, different story. And you logged out when? Uh, I don't know the exact time, but off prospect, when I about hit prospect, and probably about 50th, I logged out. 
Do you guys, because it's done different now, do you have to go to the station and check all your stuff in? Uh, at the hand end of the shift? Yeah, hand interactive and uh -huh. all that. Well, not, do, you do that every night? Yeah. Not, then, sometimes uh, you don't go to a buddy, here, turn this in, I'm no. going home. And then lieutenants clear us and say, you guys can go home. Okay, so you didn't, and what, do they make you wait till straight up two, or do they cut you majority, to two? The majority or? of the time, sometimes it's just up to the supervisor. Okay. The majority of the time. And then you left? Right and, that, yeah. And then I headed up 50th, going northbound. How'd you get to 50th? Just down Prospect? Spring Lake Station, take a right to go north, off Prospect, and take a, uh, take a left to go westbound on 50th. And then picked her up at Lincoln. Remember? About there, ish to the east, from where I saw her. Any other traffic out there? No, that was the only car. What about during the time that you had her stopped for like 15 minutes? What any, do you mean? Was there a lot of traffic going by? Was there any traffic going by? I think there was cars I could see as far as coming going west towards our direction and whatnot. But nothing like real crazy driving by us all the time. for a minute. Let us powwow. My shirt can't be While Detective Davis and Gregory step out to regroup, let's use this time to cover Janine Liggins' version of events and what transpired immediately before this interrogation began. Your phone. I wanted to take looking in your car oh, okay. but they wanted you to have your phone okay. all right so we have no misunderstanding because and maybe i didn't key in on some things i want you to you turn in your activity card walk me through it all again Holtzclaw will go over his recollection of events once again, but on this second go-around, he will be led into a line of questioning to specifically give more details around the searching of Jenny Ligon's person. While it may seem like he's repeating himself, pay close attention to what areas pressure is being applied towards. I turn my activity card, I leave out of the station, I go take a right, go northbound on Prospect, all the way to 50th. About that time, I turn off my computer, I'm done for the night. Had left to go westbound on 50th okay. from Prospect. About a block down, I see a Grand, Grand Prix in the outside lane. I was in the inside lane, directly in front of me. Car swerved at that time. I kind of fall behind of it. Then initially it lighted up until we hit about 50th and um, Lincoln. I didn't want to light it up at the, at the little stop sign, so I waited until we go forward. And just lit it up just to the west and then that's when i made the traffic stop okay walk me through the stop made the traffic stop made contact you have your license insurance normal protocol mm -hmm. she gave me her identification card and then at the time i said a valid driver's license she said no so i was like okay i had to sign to step out of the vehicle did she have insurance uh she didn't bring you to get okay. insurance. So I just saw the ID and I was like, yeah, valid okay. insurance. We have valid license. So I brought her back to the, the house, the car, and then that's when I- Okay, what I, side of your car? The back right. The passenger side? Yes. Okay, yes. go ahead. So as I'm walking her down, I was like, you have any weapons or whatever? I always ask people when I step out of the car, whatnot. At that time, I powdered her down, whatnot. Um, ask her to lift up her shirt. No, no weapons on that I could see or anything like that. Put her in the back of my car, ask her what the deal is. She's going to Ann Arbor on the northwest side to visit her daughter, I believe. Um, and then I'm like, okay, why are you swerving? Why are you late at two o'clock at night driving and whatnot? What's the deal? Um, she's like, I'm just going to my daughter's house. Okay, so why are you swerving? She's just like, I got nervous or something or whatever the deal is. So I ask her, okay, and then I go, is there anything inside the car I need to know about? And then she says, there's some juice in there. I was like, is there an alcohol in the juice? She says, no. So I was like, anything else inside of the car? She's like, oh, you might just find some pills and whatnot. So I asked, go proceed and ask, can I have consent to search the car? She says, yes. Go to the car, I did a quick search, nothing out of, you know, 
didn't look up being carpets or anything like that. A quick search, looked under his seat, um, looked through her purse, uh, saw the pills, smelt the, the juice. I didn't smell any alcohol in the juice. Uh, when I looked at the pills, I kind of quick glanced to make sure it was her name, whatnot. Okay, we're good. Went back over there, okay. And what's the deal with this, blah, 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 whatnot. And she's like, I'm just trying to go see my daughter. And then I was like, okay. I don't want to go. I don't want to take you to jail. I'm tired. I want to go home. And then she's like, okay. So basically went from there and I said, I'll follow you. Um, follow you around. We got in her car. She took it forever. So I pulled out, did a U-turn in front of her. She followed me where I could see her in the rear view mirror. We went over and I went northbound on Broadway Extension. She went 44 and West. And that was it. Did, um, why'd you log off? I always log off. Aren't you supposed to stay logged on until you get home? I always log off. Do you keep your police radio on when you go home? Uh, uh yeah. Okay, I, so think you're I, listening I think, I, think I have my radio on, yes. Do sometimes you turn them off? Yeah, I do. Sometimes. That's not good officer safety. Um, what if you drive by an armed robbery? That's true, too, yeah. I mean, or what if you drive by an officer that needs backup and you're right, right there and you didn't hear it? That's right. I'll give you your mo my mommy lecture. <laughs> So you always log off when you're done? Majority of the time, yes. Okay. When she, when you bring her to the passenger side of the car, here's her car. I'm, I'm not a good artist either. And here's your car. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you bring her over here. The back, right. Okay. Passenger side. Is this where you're having your conversation the whole time? The whole time when I touch step out of the car, I'll always talk to him when you had anything on you. So as we're walking here, I'm like, okay, there's anything on you. Okay, um, you care if I just quick pat you down? Well, just go ahead, quick pat her down. No, I have weapons, I fell or anything like that. I looked at your shirt, about right there, There's nothing. Okay, keep walking, walking. I'm still checking her out, making sure everything's good. And I'm like, anything your shoes? No. Try to take off her shoes, I'm like, are you good? So get inside the car, and that's when I proceeded to ask anything on okay, board. So she got inside the car? She got inside the did car. you go get in the car and talk, or did you stand there with the door open and talk to her? I think I did get inside the car for like a quick minute and just see what's the deal. It's just talking to her and whatnot. And that's the time where I think I smelt the alcohol just a little bit on her. But nothing for, I didn't stay in the car forever and whatnot. Just talked to her for a quick, brief minute. And then you went up and searched? Yeah, I got consent to search the car, asking if things on board. She said, juice. I was like, any alcohol in the juice? No. Anything else I should know about before I go inside the car? I want to find it. She said pills. Okay, I was like, all right. I didn't ask her specifically where the pills were. Right. So I go inside the car, look down in the front left seat, quick search and look at their car, because anything I said, smelled the juice, not as smelling the alcohol, went through her purse. First I saw bottles of pills and whatnot, but just quick glance, okay, that's her name. You know, went back. Now, when you went back, did you get in your car or did you go back over here? I, I can't, I, I don't know if I went into my car or went back over there, to be honest with you, I don't know. Did you, sometimes, like I said, we open the car door and we stand, car doors open and I'll stand right here and talk to them because they're sitting right here. What? Right. I've done that, yeah. Did you do that yeah, with her? Yeah, I did that, yes. yes. So you're having conversation while she's sitting in the car right, right. there? Right, yes. Okay, but you don't remember if you got if, back in here? I know, I, I believe I did get back in the car, that's when I smelled just a slide of alcohol on That was pre-search? I, I, I believe so. I believe okay. so. I don't know. And I'm trying to get this so we can match it up with right. the video. Right. Um, after you search, you come back over here and talk to her. Right. Okay. Any cars passing by then? Maybe a couple. Could she have missed, because if you're standing right here and you're a big guy, right. and she's sitting right here, if she goes like this, well, she's going to be looking right at your penis. Okay. But Could, it was just talking. Did you, Let me ask you this. Did you ever get a hard on while you were talking to her? Because she could have... I don't, if, I don't think I got... These pants don't fit the greatest. Right. And if, if you get a hard on, I'm going to be able to tell you get a hard right. on. Right. And I don't... I'm pretty positive I didn't get a hard on. Didn't get a hard on I'm when you talked positive, to her? Well, positive. you do you still just get boners because you get boners? Yeah. You do? Yeah. Okay. So, have you ever got a boner on a call? I'm pretty sure I have. Okay. I'm pretty sure I have. But you, but it's not something you would remember. No. I mean, I, I would remember if I got a heart on right. talking to somebody. And I, as, as a guy, it that's not something. I, I know. Happens, I know. So. 
well, you're not 50 yet either, so <laughs> <laughs> happens because of your age. Um, could she have missed? Could you have got a hard on and she saw it and it? I don't think I got a hard, I don't think I got a hard on, but like I said, she was already nervous and crying and whatnot. I'd already told her, I'm like, hey. <laughs> I want to go home. I'm done with my shift. I don't think you need to be worried about it. If nothing's on board where I need to take you to jail, you're good. I'm not worried about no state driver's license. Okay. Did your pants come unzipped, unbuttoned, anything while you were standing right there? No. CSI is processing your car right now. Right. And when we stepped out, they found some pubic hairs right in here. Could they be yours? No, that's not. I didn't pull my p out and do anything right there. Did she? No. But she do didn't. you think they could be? No, it's not. No. Nothing of mine. Your pubes couldn't be? No. Right there? No. Has your pubes ever been out do by your car? I'm, while I'm working? No. Not working? No. Have you ever had sex in the backseat of your car? I have not. Because I mean, some people do. You know, I mean, I'm not saying forced sex, consensual sex. Right. So your penis has never been in your back seat. Mm -hmm. Is it possible any of this DNA is yours? No. It's not. That's. I would like to go, go at it. Not my DNA. Are those pubes going to be yours? No. No. Are you worried about it? I'm this whole situation I'm worried about. I mean, <laughs> I've never been here, never been questioned, um, especially in the you know, like a room like this, you know. Obviously, I, I'm yeah. worried about the whole circumstances of earlier. Station you you got to understand, we kind of see different things, okay? You seem a little extra worried whenever you talked about seeing her. We talked about seeing her boobies. Mm -hmm. You sure she just didn't flash you? I can't. She did not flash. I, I want to say I can't recall, but I'm pretty positive she didn't flash. Well, I see a pair of She got. She went like this, but nothing as far as I'm going like crazy looking. Lifting, lifting the shirt. Um, no. How far did she, she lifted? She lifted the first one. I patted her down. She was like right here to her stomach line. Did you see her belly? Maybe some fat rolls or something. I don't know, but nothing. Right, like but I, I mean, could you see skin? Yeah, I saw skin, yeah. yeah. Well, she's older. We're hanging down and you I, saw the bottom of her I don't know. I don't, I don't know. It's dark. I don't know. You like older women? I don't. How old are you? She's 25. Okay. What's the oldest lady you've slept with? Uh, maybe 29. You ever slept with a black woman? I have. In high school, I have. Do you have a race that you prefer? I don't. I don't. You just like. I'm half Japanese, so I'm not really. I was going to ask you if you were Asian. Thing, so I'm not really discriminating. Who's yet. Japanese? Your mom or your dad? My mom. Is your dad huge? How'd no. you get so big? That's what everyone asks me. That's because, I mean, I thought, Asian genes are kind of small. And that's why I thought I was adopted at first when I talked to him, but uh, my dad's small, 5'9. Oh. Japanese people are small in general. So. Wow. How tall are you? About 6'2". Wow. He got big, does daddy have some big guys big on mind. his side? He's a family of four, three, well, he'll be with him with four brothers, but I think his generation, his uncle was pretty tall, and I think that's where I got it. I think we've covered a lot of the sex questions. Yeah, is there anything? You got any sex questions? I don't. <laughs> you got anything of us? I don't. I don't. I don't. I just <laughs> this whole this whole situation and it's just it's kind of scary. It is scary, and I don't like I don't want my rep to be everything's about in law enforcement. I'm three years on, I know that, but everything's about your rep. Absolutely. And I don't want this to fall on my rep. Actually. So. Why would she make? Because when when a when a woman says something, 
something like this and they go through a same exam and they get you didn't give her a ticket so she's not getting out of a ticket you didn't arrest her because we get those when they go to jail i've been raped and have to work those stupid things because right. they think they're going to get out of jail right why in the world would she make this up i don't know i was she was cooperative she was nervous like i said earlier crying i told her not i'm not worried about no stage driver's license i wasn't making she said uh, she was crying yeah and i i don't you know, at times as an officer, you might make a threat to be like, oh, I'm going to take you to jail. Um, but let's try to get some way to get in the car or something, you know, if I can get right. or something. But I'm, that wasn't a case. I wasn't threatening her. I wasn't. Did she ever ask you if you were going to shoot her? She did. She was talking about a pistol all the time and talking about guns and whatnot. And I'm like, calm down. I'm like, I'm not going to shoot you or anything like that. Did she think you were going to shoot her? Maybe. I'm like, what? And I even asked her, I think I asked her, what's the deal with you and cops? Do you have a bad run in with a cop? One question about if Liggins mentioned anything about a gun or being shot, Holtzclaw's memory is suddenly refreshed and he confirms that, yes, that this was part of the interaction as well. This seems like a peculiar thing to not remember upon first recollection. Holtzclaw remembered that she was crying, he remembered that she was nervous, but didn't remember her repeated worries about Holtzclaw having a gun and her fear of being shot and or killed. That was it. So you, you had to tell her? That's like, calm, calm down. down. Did you ever say, I promise I'll let you go? I did. I said, I promise I'll let you go. I'm not worried about no state driver's license. Is there anything inside of that car? Did you tell her you were going to follow her home? I did. I did. But then when she took forever to turn around, I got annoyed and I was like, screw it, let's go. But I saw her in the rearview mirror and I saw her take 44 when I went northbound on Broadway. Where did she live? She said she was going to sister's house in Ann Arbor. Were you really going to follow her? That's far. I was going to drift off, and I might really follow her, but I'm just going to drift off and, okay, she's good to go. So I didn't think at first she was drunk. She wasn't over the legal limit. But I thought of alcohol was on board, but nothing where she's DUI. Any way those pubes are going to be yours? No, they're not. Please don't. I, 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 I know we're going to test it. It just takes any way your skin cells are going to be anywhere on her mouth. No. Skin cells from your fingers. No. Did you touch her body anywhere other than with the back of your hand, Pat searching her? I just Pat searched her and that was about it. Didn't touch her face or anything. you got to no. understand, we've had so many people sat in that same chair right. that tell us all day long. I didn't do this, I didn't do this. They promise on their baby, on their mama. Right. They promise to God. And then they come right back. We get back these tests and you can't get out of it. You right. know? I mean once you kinda get basically kinda locked into something, there there's no talking about it. Right. And that's why we would try to give a person every opportunity. Right. Because if you know, the tests come back, you ain't coming back in here. Because we're here we have a woman that says about, you know, basically being assaulted right okay and right. we're calling it by force and all that big difference between that and a hookup right and to come back if, if there's something there and you say no and she said it was that you know you, you see where we're going right with I do. And that's why we always try to give every angle right we wasn't there right so we just got to go off of everything that we see and, and have mm -hmm. okay. you don't understand no hookup no hookup not even a little hookup? No, not a little hookup. No booby. No booby. I saw so, no breasts. Did she see your breasts? No. I'm just trying to think of anything that she could have misconstrued. Or why. Why did she go to all this trouble? I don't know. Did you do anything that pissed her off? And that's what I'm saying. I don't think I did anything when I was talking to her. I don't, wasn't rude. She was cooperative. I wasn't at a point where I'd be like, okay, you're going to jail or something or whatnot. I don't think I made any like threats to make, you know, to get in the car, like I said, or anything like that. When we first walked into the office, first time you saw us, okay? Right. And we just kind of started talking. You brought up this traffic stop. 
because the major came in or the captain talking about 50th and Lincoln. And, okay. When when he came and got you? Yeah. What did he say to you? I think it was the captain. And then we were in the major's office and he said something accusations of 50th and Lincoln. No, we, and I didn't hear any rumors going into the station or anything. I was just going to show up and line up like I don't really do. When you, when you came in, you said something about, wow, why are all them guys here? I don't think I said that. I was shocked. I'm, you said that like, in the car, not to, you were like, when I saw everybody, I was like, whoa, wonder. Because I was. Did you think we were there for you? I was just, what I saw that and I knew from Academy, I'm like, what, what's going on? Did you think it was for you? I didn't know. I didn't see it. I've never been in trouble like this before. I've never got accused of anything like this or nothing. But it scared you. Yeah, I was scared. Okay. If I walked into the station and saw some sex crimes detected there, that wouldn't scare me. It wouldn't scare me if I was just in the briefing station. But since I went in the room and was told to go in the room, and I saw then your you got, sex okay. crimes. Okay. And that's what went on. But I, I saw you when you walked in the door. Did you see me in the captain's office? I saw you, but I saw Captain glance over like that. Did you get scared then? No. The captain, I, I'm good with Captain Clifton. Are you? And just say, hey, what's up all the time? So it wasn't a big deal to me like that. And when he told me but to when you got called room, in the, then, yeah. then you were like, whoa. Yeah, what's going on? What's your phone number? 580. Did you exchange phone numbers with this lady? I did not. Did she have a phone? I did not, no. talk about hooking up later? No, I did not. Is she somebody you'd hook up with? No. Assault in the manner that's been presented by Detective Davis and Gregory isn't always about the aspect of seeking gratification through physical pleasure. It's also about the power dynamic. Those who believe in Holdsclaw's guilt believe that he had targeted disenfranchised demographics within the city. The specific group that is believed to be targeted is poor black women who may be involved in selling their bodies and or suffer from some sort of addiction. Proponents of his innocence believe that he had no reason to do this. He had an objectively attractive girlfriend who shared his love for the gym and a healthy lifestyle. He had previously never shown any propensity for this kind of behavior. There is a shared belief, however, that after going undrafted into the NFL, he may have felt like some sort of power or control was taken away from him. But this is purely speculation, and even if he did feel that way, it is yet another leap to come to the conclusion that this was a motive. What do you think? Did she want to hook up later? I don't know. I, she didn't give me any clues like that. Did she she was... asked for your number? No. I'm just trying to think of every conceivable possible thing for this. Run down through on your search of her breasts again. I exactly how that went, because even that and her pants. Was she standing or sitting when during that time? Patted when I got to the vehicle about right here. Um, said, can I search you? About not? more by the front door. The front right fender. And then I patted her down, boom, boom, boom. Lift up your shirt right here. Boom, no weapons. So Trust you me. said lift up her shirt, your yeah. shirt. Yeah. What if that would have, she would have gone, Wah! Then I would have been, I would have told a supervisor or something, I'd be like, to get that off my back, you know? I mean, it's not what I meant. You, know, you, you searched her with her, where was her, was she facing you or facing away? Facing away. She's facing away. Yeah. And how are you seeing if anything's falling, if she's facing away? If it'd fall, I'd see right there. You'd see right there, but don't you usually have them turn face towards you and do well, a shake out? Officer safety always have everyone face away from me. You can't see what you can't hit. But you don't know if the weapon's there or anything? I'm, as far as I quick pad search, lift up your shirt, no weapons on board. You made a mention earlier about her pants. Uh, she did what with her pants? As far as that, it was in the, in the back seat. Nothing, she had tight pants and that's about it. But how did did you have her do it? Like a cursory movement around her her belt line, anything like that, or any shake? No. Did you tell her how to 
how far to raise her shirt or to do the the shake with the bra anything like that i think she did the shake with her bra by herself i didn't say to do any of that as far as the she pulled it out up, and go like that, that yes but as far as that's on her as far as right here is when i told her to lift up the waistband but she was faced away from you the entire time that her her chest was right she was checking right right so when she lifted up her shirt her back was to you uh I think she was facing me, I obviously, because I'm going to look at the front end. You said you might have saw her, her belly, like a fat roll. Right. So you would have been to the side or to the front? If the time when she faced me is probably when I would have saw a fat roll or skin. But it wasn't for the, the check? No. No. Did she try to pull her pants down? No, no, I recall. Um, moved around the seat, and that's about it. Nothing else. But when me. she was standing, did she try to pull her pants down? No. no. Did she do? You said she kind of did she like did this. this. Did she ever do anything down here? No. Because at that time, if she asked me, "Do you want you want me to show you?" I was like, "No, no, I'm good." She did ask if. Yeah. What'd she say? I said, no, I'm good. When was that? Where was everybody then? I think that was in the car. Okay, I don't think you said that last time. I think I did. Yeah. You, maybe you did, I, and then maybe <laughs> I just missed it. So she was in the car and said, do you want me to show well, you? Well, she did the, the shake thing, and she's like, do you want me to show you? I was like, no. Show you what? Just as, I guess she's trying to mean as far as just a boom or something, if anything's in her bra or anything like that. But that was after you already had her lift up her shirt right, a little bit. because that was at the front right fender. Okay, okay. And like I said, I'm, I may have missed that or got confused with what talked about a lot. So she asked you when she's sitting in your car, do you want me to show you? Right. And you said so no. no. Did she attempt it? No. And that was after the... After she was kind of doing like this? Yeah. A thing that kind of concerns me is everything you're telling me is dead on to what she says. Everything. Except the stuff. Nothing was done as far as that. Nothing. She smell of anything else besides alcohol? Just a little bit, like I said, when I was in this car seat. But I asked her if anything else was on board. She just said pills. Did she smell, though, like not, weed? Not, or? not PCP or anything distinct that I would smell. Right. I didn't smell any weed inside the car. I didn't smell any weed on her person. Um, that's about it. Any questions? <laughs> I'm just, uh, I'm yeah, just, I'm just, I'm just bombarded with questions. But I know. Like, do you have any? Do you want to bombard us with any questions? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't have any questions. I just. We might, as uh, far as the, you said you take the lie detector test. Right. Detective Gregory recalls from earlier in the conversation where Holtzclaw said he would subject himself to a polygraph, now asking Holtzclaw to confirm. Polygraph results are inadmissible in court, but there are psychological advantages to using them. In this case, Holtzclaw willingly agreeing to a polygraph without hesitation would bolster the surface-level confidence of the investigators finding him truthful. Polygraphs in general are used to help navigate where the discussion in the interrogation room should go, helping investigators to hone in on potential topics or details to assist in uncovering the truth. And that navigational assistance begins before the polygraph even begins. For example, a suspect's reaction to a proposition polygraph. Do you have any extra job? Is there a time when you can't take a lie detector test? No. That you can take it at any time? I can take it at any okay. time. You're not scheduled for vacation coming I'm up? I'm not or? scheduled for vacation. Okay. 
what where are you at on your day zone right now? Uh, this will be my second day out. Okay. One's that? So you're Tuesday to Tuesday? Tuesday to Tuesday. You take any testosterone booster? I do take a pro homo, which is over the counter, uh, BYN, Beyond Your Nutrition, which is off Memorial and Pan ish. What's that do to your nuts? You know how they, they, say, they say it shrinks your nuts. Does it? They say they shrinks your nuts. Are your nuts shrunk? I don't think they are. <laughs> I mean, well, you would know this. You know your ball size. I don't. So I, I don't think they have shrunk. Done anything to your? P- no. You having problem getting it up? I don't. You having problem ejaculating? I don't. It's called BYN. BYN. Beyond your nutrition. Is that the name of the store? Or what you take? It's off the store. What's the stuff oh. you take? It's uh, called Methadrol. Does it make you hornier when you're on that? Supposedly, science says that it's supposed to increase your testosterone levels. Do you so feel? So, which, which in case, I guess, makes you more. Wait, how long have you been taking that? Uh, on and off for maybe a year. So, do you think, think you want it more since you've been on that? I mean, if you're doing it once a day, that's a lot. Plus, job. I off. think. Plus, job off. From my age, I don't think that's a lot. <laughs> Was it that? before you took this stuff yeah i think i have uh i think that's probably why i'm a bigger guy is because i have higher testosterone I'm an athlete and, and do you think you have a high sex drive yeah do you like or- normal i like it all you'll take it you'll mm-hmm. do you prefer but ba- ba- uh, would you rather go to ba- or do it in the hoo-ha do it me, you take it in the No, <laughs> you give it in the hoo-ha or get a blob? Uh, sex. Sex? What about No, I don't like that. Okay. I'll we'll just step out. I had some questions about some midgets, but I guess I'll leave that alone. <laughs> Have you ever had sex with a dude? I've never had sex with a dude. Uh, you ever wanted to? I do not. I do not want to mess with the guy. Uh, Alright. Okay. A couple of things. We powwow and then we... Right. The gal is talking about that Terry Morris, the one, uh, the other, the other person. Yeah. Okay. You're saying the same thing. Okay. You say it was downtown. She was walking. Okay, so mm-hmm. when I say a stop, that's, you know, you see right. like a voluntary contact. Right. Okay. Here, think of a cross between this is one picture and this is her. She look familiar? No. No? Mm-mm. Now, you stopped her for sure and ran here okay. on a different day. It was May 8th. Okay. okay. You sure she doesn't look familiar at all? Now, when you stopped her, you know, over at the Liberty apartment area. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's where you stopped here on May 8th. Okay. Okay. Now, does that ring a bell at all? No, it doesn't. Okay. All right. Now, you ran her then. Okay, now she says that uh, you stopped her later on, like I say, later on in the month. There's more kind of a downtown area. Does that ring a bell at all? I don't recall any of those pictures. I don't recall any of that. Okay. I don't ever go downtown besides if I go to the gas station or county or off duty jobs. Where where you work off I don't duty I don't have an off duty I have a courtesy officer at my apartment. Okay. So besides the Bar- uh, Bolero and Andy Maybe county. Viper here and there, maybe. Okay. That's what they are. Where do you on duty? But you're running Viper out of Spring Lake? Out of Spring Lake. Okay. All right. Um you ever with your car you ever go visit anybody, any buddies, anything like that or no. Shopping? Anything? No. Okay. Why, why would, uh, and granted, you're not even recalling her on the May 8th. Right. Okay. Um, but that's, I just wanted you to have a frame of mind of who's who's making this, um, these statements against you. Okay. And it's the exact same thing, too, you know. Um, you stop her, have her sit in the back seat, run for warmth, then you have her get her out. Mm-hmm. Okay. Unzip the pants. I mean, on and on and on. We can go through. I mean, it's it's to a T. It's exactly the same. Yeah, I don't recall any of those people. 
I don't think I recognize those people. Okay, what well, if you this is the same them? one. This is the same one. I'm just showing you a picture. Of how, how she's changed. Yeah, okay. this has changed. Okay. That's the same girl. It's two different time periods, but she looks kind of in between. It's the same girl. Okay. Okay. Still nothing, even vaguely. She's always on the northeast side, you know, mm -hmm. 23rd and, and Kelly, 36. Kelly. Uh, All right. But she's, I mean, she described you to a T. Okay. Okay. And like I said, I mean, it's everything, everything, you know. You don't remember her even, even forget what she's saying. You don't remember her having, offering a, a I, ride to the, to the shelter? I run in contact with a lot of people, and especially at Liberty Station, that's where I patrol. That's my area. Okay. Well, it's Charlie 3, but my sector. I go there all the time. Where is that? Just about 26 in Lindsay area. So, I, I don't bring anyone to the shelter. I don't, if I was asked, I'd be like, find another way. I don't have yeah, brought you, anyone to the shelter. It's a good way to get somebody in the car. Yeah. Do you remember having contact with a female like that age, okay? Uh, that, you know, said she was going from a shelter, from a rehab center. Um, even saying, you know, you take her, I know. driving her around, anything like that. I know. Okay. Do you ever, every time you have a female in the back, do you go 1014 or you just kind of zip on over? No, I know. I'm usually to all the times if I do, it's supposed to say policy, you're supposed to let okay. them dispatch. Who no. cares about policy right now? Because we don't at right. this point. Do you do the mileage and do all that or? <laughs> Can't hear there. Sometimes you don't? Sometimes I don't. Okay. okay. Sometimes I don't. Know. Zip on back to this other deal. You're saying about 15 minute traffic stop. How long do you usually take on traffic stop? Just on average? <sighs> Maybe 20 minutes. No, that's, that's a like, long time. Maybe, now, maybe. 20 minutes, and I'll give it to you. Just even doing the gang stuff and all that. Mm -hmm. Okay. 20 minutes. Now, that's going to be some 800 time, right? 800. Okay. Searching the car in detail, all of that. Okay, so doing all of that, all the mm -hmm. running, waiting in line, and even on a search. Now, the question I have is we got a lapse of time here, so I'm kind of get a better handle on where the time went. You're talking about 15 minutes. Mm hmm. No 800, no running on the computer, you shut it down. Mm -hmm. And you, even you said it was just a quick little search of the car. Where's the rest of that time? Just talking to her. About just, what? Just see I where mean, you're she's... going, uh, trying to, actually just trying to get her confess, are you drunk or not? Like, are you been drinking? Because I could smell it when I was in the yeah. car, but I can't really get it. Well, what if she just said, yes, I'm drunk? I probably would have took her down. Did you do any I didn't tests? Do any, I didn't do any sobriety tests. Just from inside the car, smelling it. And that's about it. But Emotional, even that, maybe. But even so. that, that would be just within a, a minute or two. I mean, it used to be DRE, so that I know how long those questions right. will last. So then you switch on over. But, but nothing? Nothing. Okay. So I didn't hear a lot of drunk questions, you know, like uh, how much have you, you been drinking? Mm -hmm. oh, mainly it's just have you been drinking, trying to get a confessed, see anything inside that juice? No. Um, why are you driving so late at two o'clock? I don't know where are you going, going to Arbor uh, on the west side. Where are you? Who are you gonna see? Just trying to just talk to her. But, okay, uh, right there. Those questions maybe took forty seconds. Fifteen minutes. And you said five at the car. So then we got ten of a lot of questions. Right. Okay. I mean, you tell me it wasn't there. I mean, well, obviously, they don't have any audio. And, I'm, and, I'm not, and that's what I'm saying. Roughly on a traffic stop, take about 20 minutes. It was the quickest traffic stop, about 15 minutes. That's your quickest traffic stop? No. Okay, I'm you're a slow poke. I'm not, I, don't, I don't really get 1090 at all or anything like that, but I, I but, take my time sometimes. But you didn't write her tickets. Didn't write her ticket. You didn't write her. Didn't write her. You didn't even put yourself out. Didn't put myself out. How in. could you take 15 minutes on that? Just talking. I must have been talking. So that's it. I don't, I can't see her wanting to talk if she's crying and asking if you're going to shoot her and all this. I don't see her being real forthcoming with conversation. 
whether my questions or whatnot, that's it. I'm, I mean, you don't seem, I mean, I don't know how you were out there, but just kind of talking with you, I mean, you seem real laid back and everything like that. I, I don't, yeah. I've never got the impression of just kind of an angry type cop. We know some, right. you know, that, uh, yeah, you might would ask, but I, I don't see that question coming up of, of you. Right. And you're not saying she was drunk or high or, I mean. I didn't think she was drunk over legal limit point oh eight. And like I said, I didn't, I didn't make any threats to her. She, she was just emotional because I made mean, the gun deal or she saw a cop and what she gun just, deal? she said, you got a gun. So I was like, calm yeah, down. Duh. Everybody is. Yeah. And so I guess she brought that up and I was like, calm down. When she asked about the, you got a gun. What what point did she ask that? Uh, she asked that right when we were searching the passage and when we were in the back of the car. So she brought twice. it up twice. Twice. She just says you got a gun or what? Yeah, and it starts crying. I'm, I'm like, don't get emotional. It's okay. Did she ever say you shouldn't do this? No. Or I can't do this. No. She just says, you got a gun. You got a gun. Are you going to shoot me? And then I, and I, no, I don't think she's ever said that. No, you said, you said last time. You, yeah. I said, did okay. she, did she, well, did she Maybe she said that, but then I was like, do you have any bad runs in with the cops? And she's like, no. That just doesn't fit. That's just weird. And that's what, I, I mean, that's, I'm kind of in there too. I don't know if, I don't think she was drunk. But I know there's pills on board. I don't know if, I don't know. So, what was it what, to the do, point? Do you carry a Glock? Oh, you I don't do. have it on. Yeah. I don't need to pay attention. Said the, the one you got in the academy? Yes. What else you taking besides that pro hormone? It's about creatine. Uh, what in the creatine? Just creatine, monohydrate. Uh, I don't know exact ingredients in it. Um, but I'm saying, is it is it in something? I mean, is it like an intro workout, a pre workout? Yeah, pre workouts are in creatine. Okay. Um, but give me the names of what you're using. There's a lot of supplements I'll take. How much uh, money you spend on supplements? It costs a lot. Supplements cost a lot. Start rattling them. <laughs> uh, C4 pre workout. Um, no explode. Um, let's see. Uh, Domatize has some. A condense. Domatize has what? Even for your protein? They have, I take their protein. Um, you taking any injection? No, no. It's pro hormones. Okay. You got anything to offset the pro-hormone stuff? Uh, liver, liver pills, because I guess it's bad to take oral, so I take liver pills, and that's about it. Multivitamins, med sports, multivitamins, and that's about it. All this stuff, does it make you, do you, you ever get mad? I don't. Then aggressive that all is uh, a myth is it it's a myth that's just based on the guy's personality I guess well, not. have you ever roided have I did steroids no I've been around it in college NFL I've seen guys do it college I've seen guys do it you didn't do it never did it how come I started as a true freshman in college, so I got random tested by NCA. NCA tests for all that uh, as far as steroid use. And you get tested in college just for street drugs. So I didn't know when randomly they could do it. I didn't Why weren't put, the other guys worried about it? What happened if they got caught they, on it? I don't think they didn't care. I, I cared. I didn't want to. I started as a true freshman. I didn't want to do that. I didn't. It wasn't about me. I was a big bone kid. I didn't need to get stronger. I didn't feel like I think that would come natural. I didn't feel like I needed to get faster or anything like that. What happened if you got caught doing it in a random test? The NCA would suspend you. You'd uh, but like anything, just, I mean, there's always something before they ban it and stuff. 
Yeah. The old Andro days and stuff. Yeah. So. Did you do the supplements and all that then? Yeah, but I had to, back then you had to be a little careful as far as talk to your team doctor, what's in this, is this FDA approved? Just don't have that risk of actually, you know, getting it. tested for a small ingredient and whatnot. So you don't think 15 minutes was too long on that traffic stop? No, I'm... And nothing sexual went on during nothing, that 15 minutes? Nothing sexual. When you said you were going to follow her, but she took too long, how long is too long? Where you turn off the lights, okay, go ahead. Wait just a little bit, wait a little bit. Okay, so... I hooked a U-turn and went. 30 seconds, 45 seconds, a minute? Maybe a little bit longer than a minute. What, you, what was she doing? Could you see in the window? I, could, I just saw her just pull up a little bit, kind of stalled and slow creep up. And I'm like, what are you doing? And go and I'll follow you. But then I just, boom, hooked a U-turn. Went north on north, uh, 235, roughly extension. We're going to call tomorrow. We can't get a hold of the polygrapher today okay. and um, get that scheduled. Uh -huh. And I'll call you on your cell phone uh -huh. and tell you when it is. Uh -huh. Do you know where the, it's at the training center? Did you? When we did the camera, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Then I'll call you and get, we got to get that all set up. And then okay. I'll call you. Get your schedule. Bow wow one more time. Any questions? No, I don't have any questions. Can Daniel go? Maybe he can go <laughs> after, after this. It's a little toasty in here. It is a little toasty. We keep this open. Your pants, these are the pants you wore last, last shift. Uh, yes. It is? Yes. Okay. About your underwear? No. Where are they at? Uh, in the wash. They're in the washer? Washer. Washer. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, you need your pants. Okay. I didn't figure you'd have a <laughs> uh, Okay, we're trying to figure out a way to speed this on along. I don't know what it's been. Um, What, what would you, we're trying to figure out whether just to figure out. It's, it's you guys, on. whatever you guys want to do. You guys call. I don't know. It's you guys call. I don't know. If you want me, I'll drop them. Yeah. Okay. okay. You don't want to wear like some Tybex pants or something home? Does that matter? I don't, I don't care. Whatever. Okay. Whatever. All right. Who, who all was home when you got home? Uh, my girlfriend, Carrie Hunt. You live with anybody else? No, no. Is she a policeman? No, she's not. Uh, Carrie Hunt? Carrie Hunt. What's her number? Uh, can you go through my phone? Yeah. As much as I don't want to get her involved. We're not going to tell her what's going on. Uh, but we are going to. tell her whatever you want to. Yeah, we're not going to. Uh, her number is going to be... Nine one eight. Does she work? Are we gonna? If we she call? does work. Does she, she works work at now? normal eight to five hours, Monday through Friday. Okay. Where does she work? At a uh, Crest and Oil Memorial in MacArthur area, around there. Okay. All right, we're getting those tie to you know. Don't call her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You created some more work. Yeah. Fixing to go. <laughs> I just talked to Karen. Okay. 
She said she was asleep when you got home and you did not try to have sex and you did not have sex. She said you didn't. And I asked her, could you have been asleep and you had kind of wall no and she said no. She you did not try to have sex. As much as I don't want to involve her, I tried to have sex with her and she was asleep. Carrie goes to sleep pretty early, about nine. 10 at the late. Okay, the but it, she would know if you try. I'm a woman. I know. And, and my husband comes <laughs> home in the middle of the night, and I'm like, Are you kidding me? I've been asleep. You said you twirled around her vagina, and you put it in a little bit, and then she said, I'm tired. No. I did. She would remember that to tell me. She, maybe. She you. said you did not try to have sex. <laughs> and it's more personal because it's Carrie, but I did try to have sex with Carrie. I did. I, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, because it just looks like I just caught you in a lie. And now I don't know I, what to believe. I'm telling you. I don't know what to believe. Okay. Because you tell me this, I go to verify it. She tells me the opposite. And now I'm, now I'm wondering what you're telling the truth about. Maybe because she doesn't know what the heck's going on. No, she doesn't. I didn't tell her. And I'm glad, but... The detectives calling her, any other officer asking her a question like that. I know. She may be scared. And I don't want to involve her, but she's involved that's because my you, girlfriend. That's like you need her involved for you. Right. But now she's given the story that you're not given. I'm, I'm telling you, I try to have sex with Carrie, my girlfriend. She and is going to remember like, your weenie twirling around her hoo ha. You remember that. I don't, I'm don't. i sorry, I don't care how much of a sleeper you are. You remember because it pisses you off in the middle of the night and you go, are you serious? Don't bother yeah. me with that. Uh, maybe you should call her and ask her if she's a deep sleeper. Because there's multiple times I've tried to do that. Multiple times we've had sex. Multiple times she has pushed well, me Well, you off. told me that you have sex every day and she says you did not have sex today. We didn't have sex today, no. Well, you said you have sex every day. Mostly every day, yes. So if I call her back, is she going to tell me that you'll have we sex every not, day? We did not have sex, but recently, but, mostly all every day, yeah. I, I, I'm a woman, and I know what it feels like to be woke up for sex, and I don't like that. And you remember it, and and I don't, you, I don't believe you. Detective Davis lets Holtzclaw know where she stands in this investigation and that his words are falling on ears that have already heard their own conclusion. Daniel's girlfriend, Carrie Hunt, was contacted by investigators and she denied any sort of intimate contact between her and Daniel. Regardless of what he says now, the lead investigator has already drawn a conclusion of guilt, which can be especially harmful for a number of reasons. One of the especially worrying outcomes of that is that the investigators could now seek evidence that supports the notion of a suspect's guilt instead of evidence that supports the truth. To the outside observer, the idea of Carrie denying any sort of allegation of impropriety, in this case, the act of initiation while she was sleeping, could have been to protect Daniel. But in this Oklahoma City interrogation room, it's the furthest thing from being a possibility. As the investigators mentioned before, they wouldn't tell Carrie what was going on, so she would have no idea about the basis behind the line of questioning. How would you respond if you were Carrie in that moment? Detective Davis will call Carrie again shortly, but Davis never returns to discuss the call. I'm telling you the truth, I'm sorry. I tried to have sex with my girlfriend. I did. Oh, you're a dude. Does your wife get I pissed could, off if you try to wake her up in the middle of the she night? She had white white thong on and and a t-shirt. Okay, you talk to him. I'm gonna go call her again. Okay. Cause right now, I don't believe it. Hey, the pants. You want me to bring them in? Yeah. In a plastic bag. Yeah. I mean a brown paper sack. Okay. Don't start yet. Wow. <laughs> and that's probably her messing or whatever. I don't She's like what? And oh, I wish well, we're not gonna. Her, Carrie. Well, we're not gonna tell her. You're gonna have to explain whatever the situation is. That's what happened. You got any questions about all this? <laughs> oh, you. I'm you gonna guys. attack now. I'm just feeling. Oh my God, bless. <sighs> I want DNA, I want everything, I want to get it done. 
we're, we're, we're going to put it to the front of the line, okay? Get it done. I can tell you, it usually takes a long time, but because of the situation, we will put it at the front of the line, okay? Yeah. I mean, usually on the stuff, we do whatever we can. Here is shorts and a shirt. I don't know if the shirt will fit in a sec. Before I call Carrie. Yes. You shirt. tried to have sex with Carrie. I tried not to have somebody my else. girlfriend, yes. That was in my bed, yes. Do you ever cheat on her? No. So it's only Carrie right now. Carrie. Okay. All right, man. CSI enters the room to take Holtzclaw's uniform as evidence for processing. Unknown to him, this is the last time that Daniel Holtzclaw would ever wear a police uniform. Pants in this bag and just put the. Unless you want to keep the shirt on, I don't know. I don't know if this shirt's going to be big enough for you here. Big old boy. I was going to get a Tyvek, so I don't know where these came from. Alright, I'm going to Well. Think of anything. Will it be okay if I tell my family about this? And no, you tell me. Like, okay. It's it's your life. Man. Look, we usually have to spend we spend as much time anytime there's an allegation. Okay, trying to clear up the matter right. one way or the other. I just okay. don't want my girlfriend involved. You know, something. I try to have sex with my girlfriend. As bad as that sounds, as bad that sounds when she's asleep, yeah. No, no, you're fine. Hey, I try to crawl up my wife all the time. Hey, she shoots me down. Like, she's probably just imagining her just being all nervous and whatnot, you know? Just... Well, you can get home and kind of explain everything. So what goes on from now? There she is. Jesus. Well, you're headed home, obviously, because you need some pants. Why don't you go ahead and get dressed then? Why we stay here? Yeah, stay there. Okay. We're, getting, we're, we're really done with you. Okay. Just hang back. Can I can I message her and say I'll I'll because she's probably blowing on my phone. Go Just like hang off. You're fine. Talk to you. You're fine. Daniel is given the opportunity to contact his girlfriend, who is undoubtedly reeling from the strange phone calls and questions she is receiving from Detective Davis.
Hey, baby. Babe. I need to, <laughs> I need to tell you what's going on. It's crazy. I said, when I'm, on, I'm basically on my way home, and I'd like to talk to you. What's going on? It's, it's crazy. Yeah, give me. Uh, they're gonna give me a ride, so I don't know, probably 10, 15 minutes. Till I get 15, yeah, around there. I don't know, 15, 20, 30 minutes around there. Yes. I don't know. It's I. I gotta tell you, it's uh, it's crazy. They're just. That's nuts. I gotta. So, uh, I love you, okay? okay? I love Holtzclaw waits patiently, certainly realizing what would be coming next. A mandatory leave from duty pending the results of the investigation. Hey Dan. Hey man. Oh, it's hot in here. Yeah it is. Hey, uh, until this investigation gets all completed, what's going on, we're going to put you on administrative leave of pay, okay? Sure. Just part of procedures, you know, and they got to do this until it gets all taken care of, yeah. okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you this to sign that you're receiving it. And I'm uh -huh. going to give you a copy to take home. I want you to read it very carefully when you get home because okay. there's some details to other people forget to read. You know, such as you got to check in with me on every Tuesday morning before 9 o'clock. Okay. Call me at the station and just make sure I know who you are and where you're at. Okay. There's some things we got to take from you. We already, I think there's firearms already in there. Yes, sir. In, your, in the deal. Um, do you have your... Um, y your shirt in here, we'll get your badge off that. Yeah. Is that the only badge you have? Yes, because the other badge is upstairs because it was, uh, we got lost through their foot chase. So. Okay. The other one's upstairs. Upstairs where? Uh, with Susan, um, oh. Chief. Okay, assistant. so you haven't got a replacement yet? I haven't yet. You have not? Okay. okay. Well, we need to find out about that as well. So you just have the one on the desk and whatever. Let's go ahead and get that from you. Okay. And we're going to need your radio too. We'll just kind of check it off as we go here. Yeah. Thank you, so we got the badge and the radio, you know, that radio there. And Lieutenant Gregory's going to take you home too, get you right home. Are you still up on North May? Yes, yes 14, sir. 14, 200? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, we've got the badge. And then do you have your commission card and entry card with you? I do. Okay. And this, the seal missing is from, from the last yes. foot chase thing, yes, right? Yes, okay. sir. Okay. So we have the entry card and we have the... Clean card. Clean card, card, entry card. Okay. Is that your entry oh, card? This, is this, I'm sorry. What do you yeah. have here? Okay, is that all? The uh, clean card is commission okay. card. We'll and take all is, that. Is okay. entry card. We got all that. And here, um, do you have anything else besides your firearm? Do you have a, um, a shotgun? I do have a shotgun. Is it in your vehicle? It's at home. It's at home, okay. Yeah. I'll get that. He'll grab that okay. when he goes with you and grab that. Um, he'll probably grab your radio charger as well. Okay and any spare batteries you have there. You don't have a taser. I don't have a taser. Nothing like that. No, um, no. We have your, I have your keys to your car. Do you have any um, keys to the station or anything like that? No, no. Okay. All right. And that's going to be it. Okay. I'm going to let you sign this that you're receiving it, okay? And I'm going to give you your own copy, okay? So you can read it. Now, you can't wear your uniform. Of course, we have your, all your badge and gun. You can't work extra jobs. can't drive city vehicles. So, And then, you know, those guys will be in touch with you for any further follow-up with that, okay. you know. And if you, be sure to read this, like I said, because, you know, if you go out of town, you got to call and let us know no, first. Okay. If you go, um, if you're going to go out of state, you need to get permission from us. Those okay. type of deal, but read it very carefully. Okay. That's your copy right there. And I'm going to witness it. Okay. I think that's it. Arthur. Okay. And you'll take her. Um, let me, I'll take the. Um, 
Yeah, I'll, I'll take that in the badge if you want to. Okay. Ready, I'll, just, I'll just take that. If you can get the... And I'll get and I'll get the things that he has at home. Yeah, and I, I'm, let me call you back. I'm pretty sure that um, Melvin's working tonight. Okay. And he can just let you in my office and stick it in there. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm almost positive he is working okay. tonight, I would, I would guess. And he's going to take these things home? Yes, he can take those home. He can take those home. That those items with you, you take. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Arthur. I will probably bring those things back. Okay. Now, um, okay. okay. As we present the events after this interrogation, we will try to stay objective and present what we found to be verifiably factual. We stand on the side that there's enough information publicly available to give credence to both sides of the scale. Both sides present compelling arguments that, by their own, could be enough to prove innocence or guilt. But justice does not operate in a vacuum. We must take all the information and come to our own conclusions. And we can only ethically make those conclusions when we meet one specific criteria, that they are beyond a reasonable doubt. After surrendering his OCPD uniforms, badges, cards, guns, radio, and keys, Holdsclaw was placed on indefinite paid administrative leave and was released without any charges at the time. After further investigation eventually turned up a dozen additional complainants, Holtzclaw was arrested two months later on August 21st, 2014, and was originally charged with 16 counts of sexual abuse offenses, later increased to 36 total charges. The detectives then reviewed Holtzclaw's automatically recorded history of running names through the department's two databases, looking specifically for people who had been checked out multiple times, and they contacted those people. 21 total accusers claimed that they fell prey to Holtzclaw. Seven of the 21 total accusers admitted that they had lied. One of the seven admitted false accusers, Shanice Barksdale, was convicted of making a false report. An additional one of the seven was a male whose statements did not lead to any charges against Holtzclaw, but they also did not recant their statement. One of the 21 total accusers came forward after charges against Holtzclaw had already been filed and court proceedings were underway. Of the 13 remaining, each individual accuser's statements resulted in multiple charges, totaling up to 36 charges brought before the court. Of the 13 accusers, charges stemming from five of them all led to not guilty verdicts. At least one guilty verdict was returned from each of the remaining eight accusers' charges. Daniel Holtzclaw received 18 guilty verdicts and 18 individual prison sentences as a result of those verdicts. Holtzclaw was ordered to serve those consecutively, totaling a 263-year term in state prison, effectively guaranteeing that Daniel Holtzclaw will die in prison. Twelve of the total 21 accusers and the one accuser that came forward after proceedings were underway filed civil lawsuits, seeking cash settlements from both Holtzclaw and Oklahoma City. The parties championing for Daniel Holtzclaw's innocence actually do have some valid counter-arguments. One of the questionable circumstances surrounding the investigation into finding potential victims was the leading nature of the conversations that Detective Davis had with the people she contacted. Instead of probing for answers, potential victims were asked if they were assaulted by an officer. How this and the various other questionable investigative methods impacted the case is up to you to decide. The lack of physical evidence exists as well. There was no fluid DNA found on Holtzclaw's person or clothing, only skin cells. All of the DNA samples could be explained through contact transfer. In addition, the prosecution failed to really present a true motive. However, the same question always comes back to mind. Why would Janie Liggins lie? Detective Davis and Gregory mentioned that there was another accuser, Terry Morris, whose previous statements matched almost exactly to what Liggins said. However, the jury found Holtzclaw not guilty for the charges stemming from Terry Morris. Sherry Ellis, the woman whose accusations resulted in a total of 62 years for Holtzclaw, repeatedly stated that the officer who she was assaulted by was a black man. But it always comes back to Jenny Liggins. She had no reason to lie. There was no public knowledge for her to potentially use as a basis for unfounded claims. She had no reason to exact revenge, and the charges from her accusation resulted in a guilty verdict. Oklahoma County District Judge Tim Henderson, who presided over Holtzclaw's criminal trial, resigned in March 2021 and came under investigation after two female prosecutors and another woman accused him of sexual misconduct. Henderson presided over numerous high-profile criminal cases in Oklahoma County. 
Many of Henderson's cases that involve the female prosecutor, such as the case against Holtzclaw, are now under scrutiny. On February 2nd, 2022, Daniel Holtzclaw went before the parole board. He was unanimously denied. On September 21st, 2022, attorneys representing eight of the 13 accusers who filed a joint civil lawsuit filed a joint stipulation of dismissal with prejudice. In effect, the lawyers for Holtzclaw's accusers are asking a federal judge to dismiss the lawsuit they brought and to dismiss it with prejudice. Holtzclaw's family continues to rally behind him, seeking to right what they believe has been wronged. The alleged victims of Daniel Holtzclaw continue to march on, fighting to be made whole, advocating for police accountability and justice for the disenfranchised. Both sides remain steadfast in their version of the truth. Daniel Holtzclaw is currently incarcerated at the Lexington Assessment and Reception Center in Lexington, Oklahoma. With a current expected release date of January 25, 2279, it is likely that he will remain behind bars for the rest of his life.